Nigga, I was damn bad. Now I'm on a jet for real. Got all this ice on me, baby. Told my protect the chill. Sipping all this coating, my bag, this bitch is on X Peel. I want a couple million without a record deal. Got 25,000 on me when I've been riding in the fountain. Got all this honor on me. Bitch, I'm so fly, don't matter. I wanted to feel the V12 when I was riding in Atlanta. Busy been cush all day. I'm damn near high as my family. I got three bitches with me. They want the baguettes on their neck. Bitch, I was made inside the projects. I got crip on my set. Nigga, I was really on the floor. Then I woke up in the jet. Ain't never had a dodge, no nigga. I just might cop demon. I'm shopping at Neiman's. Balling every season. Feeling like I'm dreaming. Shining every week. All right, guys. We're uh, live here at the line at Highline Social Lounge with uh, Javon Holland. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking time out of your busy season so far. Of course. It's been an interesting season. So everybody knows who Javon Holland is, right? Let's rewind that back a little bit and like get some background for the people that know Javon Holland but don't know all about Javon Holland. All right. So uh, born in Canada. Yes. So I was uh, I was born and raised in Canada. Well, I say born and raised because I want to like you know, not necessarily give a shout out to Canada, but it's like you know it's a part of me, so I, I say raised there. Right. Um, and I say I grew up in America. Uh, I was born in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I lived in Coquitlam. Small town, just outside of Vancouver. It's like a bigger city, whatever. Nice up there, cold as fuck, but I mean, uh, <laughs> it's cool. It was cool. I enjoyed right. it, you know. Um, as a kid, you know, I played sports. I played soccer. I couldn't play football because I wasn't old enough. Right. But um, but no, yeah. pe no, no pee wee leagues or anything like that. Well, pee wee leagues were they were they had an age limit, right? So I, I I was too young at the time. Like I was there watching my brother play, and my sister was younger than me too. So we're watching my brother. My mom and dad coached him. So right. Um, I was just outside of that realm. I played flag football, of course, you know. I was fully sure. invested in football from, like, a young age. Right. So, um, being in Canada, like, that's all I knew. The game, the rules were different, and I had no idea that the rules were different until I got to America, of course, but, you know, I was back there. I was locked in. Um, so, from Canada, uh, in 2008, we moved to America, to Fremont, California, where my grandmother lives. So my mom grew up. Uh, so, when I got there... I was in second grade, and then I was like the first year I was able to like really start playing tackle football and whatnot. Okay. Uh, so I played so for the Tri City Titans, you know, cool shit like that. It was a, uh, it was a good time. I still got friends that I know that you know played on the team with me, but that was like my first taste of like real like tackle football was right. when I got to America. Right. Yeah. And how was that like that first initial contact you've ever had? Uh, it was well. I mean, I played I played lacrosse, right? So I okay. knew I knew contact to a certain extent. Like I didn't in lacrosse, you can't like just shoulder check somebody. Right. You, know? right. you have to, like, two hands on the stick and, you know, hit them with your hands, basically. But, um, you know, I didn't like contact at all. In, in really? I hated it. I played quarterback and running back. Really? But I hated getting hit. I was always trying to, like, <laughs> juke people. I just – it was not for me. Not until I got older, you know, I liked contact. Okay. Yeah. When did you start playing defense, then? Um, I always played defense. When I, when I was in fourth grade, I played D-line because I was a bigger kid. Right. Uh, even though I played running back. But I played, like, D-end and – I was watching uh, who was playing for the Eagles at the time. I think it was like Javon Curse, and like he played DN too. So I was like watching him, and then my dad played DB. So I was like learning how to play DB, like backpedal and whatnot. But at the same time, I was just like a bigger kid, so coaches were putting me where I would fit at. Right. So that's when I was like really started playing defense. So you've had exposure on both sides of the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To say. So you understood the game from both sides of, of the course, ball. Of course, of course, yeah, of course. I started with quarterback, so that was like my, my right. go-to uh, position at the time. So. Right. You got an arm. Yeah, I can throw. Well, not as big, not as good as I used to be able to, but right. I can definitely throw. Yeah, interesting. Right. Maybe they'll put you on off. If they had to put me out there, I could go. Yeah, ahead I mean, and listen, shake. You know, I don't listen to shake for sure. When we lost Tua, you know, mm -hmm. in that game, you know, we might have been better off putting you back there. You I don't know. know. Tua, uh, Teddy, and, and Skyler definitely prepare more than me, sure. I, especially <laughs> at this level. I don't know if I can right. have the and pressure a quarterback. I, now. I got that's you. I mean, I don't much. know the way they were slinging it. You know, we might as well have tried something else. <laughs> I don't know. But don't know, so, so now we're going to high school. Did you start in defense on high school? Is that what, was that where you first arrived at your like position? Uh, yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. Uh, I was I was trying to be varsity as a freshman, but obviously I was too young. Right. Uh, kind of same shit that happened in Canada. Right. But um, I was playing I was playing receiver in like eighth grade, seventh grade. That was like my go to spot after I left quarterback. So I really wanted to like really lock in that receiver. My, of course, my dad's a DB, so I knew that I was going to end up playing DB. He was our DB coach. Right. So I was like, all right, I'll play safety. Just because that was always my, like, if we're playing outside, I'm like, all right, I'm going to safety. Just because I like getting interceptions. Right. Um, so it was, like, maybe halfway through the summer when we're, like, practicing and whatnot, and I'm playing safety, and I'm, like, getting picks and, like, tackling people. 
my dad's like, oh, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> oh, you're pretty good. Dude. You can do this. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you can really do this. And like, right. I knew that I wanted to play in the NFL since like a real young age. Really? And I knew I was talented. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I knew I was talented. And I like worked really hard like going into high school because I knew it was going to be a big challenge. Sure. And, like my brother was on, varsity, was on varsity as a freshman. So I'm trying to like basically what, do what he does. He's four years older than me. So when he left high school, I went into, into high school. Got it. So I'm like, all right, like I'm next up type mindset. So right. I was working hard and I was prepared. But like, I was like, man, okay, I'm pretty good at this game. Like I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm really doing it at safety. And, um, and then from there, I just kind of like, you know, kind of grew throughout the season. But yeah. So was that your first experience with recruiting? When you started in high school and you played a couple of years and then you came into your position? Yeah, so. Um, and what, I'm sorry, uh, just was it kind of college scouts or coaches coming up to you at games ra randomly or were you visiting? Nah, you that's out a good schools? question because a lot of people yeah. don't understand like the way that recruiting works. Yeah. Right. So going into, I'd say, my sophomore year, we had two guys on our team Camilo Eifler and Elijah Rare Tucker. Elijah plays uh, left tackle for the Jets. And Camilo plays linebacker, or he plays a uh, Mike linebacker for for the Commanders. Right. So they are two years old. Camilo's two years older than me. Elijah's one year older than me. They're both um, Army All Americans and five stars, right? So they had the talent coming in and watching us play, and they had all the scouts and the views and whatnot. And so for me, I was just playing to play. Like my sophomore year, right? I, I started off first game. I took back a punt return. Like that's just that was just just because I wanted to score. Like that was just how it was. Right. Um, I knew I wanted to play D one. That was my goal. I just didn't know how to get it started really. Sure. So my sophomore year, I started like playing. I started uh, getting on Twitter a lot more because I seen Camilo on Twitter. Yeah. Like a lot of coaches are on Twitter. Started getting into Twitter, and um, then sophomore year is done. Junior year, I was like working out a lot, playing seven on seven and whatnot. And so going into my junior year, that's when like the offers really started to like to come through. I was uh, I was at the Washington State. I mean the Washington Satellite Camp in the Bay Area at Laney College. Um, my coach Napoleon Kaufman was like a Washington, like, he's a uh, University of Washington, like, Hall of Famer. He played on the Raiders, played running back for a long time. Okay. Right, so he's, like, big in Washington. So he's like, yeah, come down. You know, we got a couple guys. I want you to see him. So I go to the camp, doing my thing. I'm at corner in the camp, which I don't really play, like, I mean, I, I was at safety, but I was, like, oh, fuck it, I'll go play corner. Um, so at the satellite camp, they're, like, teaching, teaching us their technique and what they do and who can, like, replicate that as fast as possible and go, like, do one-on-ones and stuff. Right. So I'm out there, like, going against, like, their commits, guys who are, like, seniors or, like, Guys who are, are like JUCO guys are there, so I'm going against them as like a incoming junior, younger guy. And you're um, making them look silly. Lock them up. I'm 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 doing what I need to do. <laughs> right. Uh, there was a couple guys that were giving me the business, but I you know I was doing what I need right. to do. So at right. the camp, I'm thinking like, man, they they invited me personally, like I'm about to get an offer. Da da da. So I always remember this coach Shaver. He played. He's a DB coach at Utah State. Uh, he came up to me and was like, hey, like give me a number. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to you tomorrow. I was like, all right, like for sure, like. Cool. But I'm not thinking like, oh, he's about to offer me. Like, that's why he wants my number. I'm thinking right, he just right. wants to talk. So I go to sleep. I'm not paying none attention. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So next day I wake up. It's like, this all Saturday. So I wake up. Um, my coach is like, hey, uh, make sure you're by your phone. I'm like, all right, for sure. So it's like 12, a, 12 p.m. He calls me. He's like, yo, this is Coach Shaver. Like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm cool, man. Like, what's good? Like, how can I help you? He's like, look, Javon, like, you know, at the camp, I thought you were a really good young talent and uh, we want to offer you a scholarship. I was like, all right, so like, What's the like? What's the catch? Like, <laughs> I'm like, like, what is it? Like, thirty percent? Like, fifty percent? He's like, no, no, no. Like, we want to offer you like four hours scholarship. At that point, I was like, oh, like it's getting serious. Like, right. I can right. do this. Like, wow. so that was your first. Uh, that was your first communication. My first communication with like a college coach, and it happened to spend like two days. And I was like, wow, like, dang, I got my first offer. So I'm calling my mom, like, mom, I got an offer. Like, Utah State. Like, I'm going to Utah State. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm there. Like, I'm about to commit. Uh, I called my brother, called my dad, my grandma. Everybody came over, like, you know. Everybody's like, take a step back and relax. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is so great. Like, congratulations. It was kind of like the first, okay, I've been saying it. I've been, you know, working at I want right. to be a D1 athlete, go to school for free. But this is like the first time I was like, my parents kind of like, oh, wow, like, you don't have to pay for college. Like, my <laughs> dad knew. My dad knew. Same with my mom. But it was, right. it was like. Well, he was a pro himself. So right, he right. understood what it took to be. Exactly. The, exactly. That but like, right. once it happened, everybody was like, mm, like so okay, it was nice. now we're on our way. Right. So then all the, all the other schools start recruiting you as well. I mean, there were a number of schools that recruited you. It took you were, a, you it were took considered kind of a, a four-star athlete, it, right? It took, it took a little bit of a minute to, to get the other schools going. Mm -hmm. But in recruiting, it's like say, like, say you get offered by a school, right? And all three of us are universities. I offer you. And then so it's like, okay, like, we'll see what his next offer is, right? So then you offer him. 
Okay, then you're like, okay, I don't want to miss out on this kid. I don't even know, even if I think he's not good. Right. Our rivals see something in him, so we right. want to offer him too. You want to take him off the. You head. just got to get the ball rolling. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like the snowball. Yeah, effect. it's like a snowball effect. Once you get one or two, then it just starts to it just starts to roll in. Right. And so once you get Power Five, then like Mountain West and like the smaller conferences, they try to reach out and offer you because like, oh, if he's Power Five talent. Then without even play. seeing you. Yeah, without even seeing me play, and that was another thing that I was kind of just like, oh, okay. I mean, they see my tape and whatnot, but it was like, like. Teams were just calling, like, hey, how you doing? Like, we like the way you play. We're off you. Like, okay, cool. Like, I get offered. I got an offer from Utah. Like, two days later, I got offered from, uh, from uh, Wazoo. And I'm like, right. Oh, like, that's just, and then there was Syracuse and Notre Dame. Right? Yeah, Syracuse, Notre Dame. Like, I had, like, 18 or so. Notre offers. Dame is a pretty hard school to just say no to. Yeah, that was – but on the weather, though. Yeah, like, I was on a – I mean, it's Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame is not, that's Rudy. Rudy. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, like – it's, Rudy it's makes me want to play at Notre Dame. Yeah. I don't know about you. No, you ever seen the movie Rudy? No, I've not. You've seen never it. seen the movie Rudy? Never watched it. You're a pro <laughs> football player. You never watched the movie never Rudy? Seen Rudy? Oh my god! Never never seen Rudy. I mean, it's Rudy old. is like it's too old. It, yeah. it's, it's not too old. It's, it's a leather it's, helmet. When did it come out? When did it come out? I don't know. Probably came out when there were leather helmets around. But it's it's an incredible story about a guy who literally just worked his ass off to walk on the 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 Notre Dame football team. It was his whole entire dream. I mean, it just makes you want to play football. Period. So I I just. Was connecting that with there's a player that there's, there's, a, there's like a guy in the NFL. Oh no, uh, yeah, no, well, no, he's not in the NFL. Based he never, on a true story. Yeah, what was yeah his it's name? based on a true story. Yeah. His name, his name was Rudy Rudiker. Okay. He yeah. was like this big though. I mean, the guy was like, and he wound up playing, I think all. F oh no, he only played the last two years because he had to go to the community college right there. Right. And then he wound up being on the practice squad when he finally got admitted to uh, Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Never got the dress until they allowed him to dress for the very last game. And he actually got in for the last play. They were, Notre Dame was already winning, and he got a sack, and they carried him off the field. And I think he was the last guy to be carried off the field in Notre Dame. Nice. In the history of the school. Yeah. Whatever. I got off topic. Anyway, so you, you wind up taking your, your offer from uh, Oregon. So the offer, that offer came later. That offer came real later. I played right. the season with, like, three offers. Right. Um, my second offer was Arizona. And my coach knew one of the recruiters, and so he, he sent him my tape. And uh, he called me, like, right when school began. So it was like right around the first game. So I got two offers in, and then like four games in, I got an offer from UCLA, and that was the one that was had the, like the other schools like, okay, like he's getting offers from UCLA. It's kind of like okay, nah, let's, let's let's get on this kid. It's the real deal, um, exactly. And so at the same time, I'm also balling. Like it's my junior year. I'm playing receiver, right? Playing corner and and, uh, and safety. Like I'm like doing my doing what I need to do. Right. So I got Cal, and then uh, I got power uh, power five like Boise State and. Uh, San Jose State. So right. they started to just roll in. Um, and then they kind of stopped for a little period of time. And then sure. I got into seven on seven. Right. And like during seven on seven, where I was like traveling to LA to play and, and whatnot, that's when the offers really started to like to really come in. Got um, it. So you stayed uncommitted <laughs> until? I stayed uncommitted until uh, May 1st of my going. Of my junior year, going into my senior year. Did you go on any visits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during seven on seven, like I visited all the Pac-12 schools I wanted to. I knew I was going to stay on the West Coast and play right. Pac-12. Yeah, you um, you didn't want any part of the Midwest or the West. Coast. I didn't want to go I mean, over there. Like, just just because I never I never really visited over there or anything. Right. I didn't right. know nobody over there. And all, far from home. Right, right. I wanted to be far enough to be away, but then right. close enough where they can like drive and come see me. Yeah, or, right. You know what I mean? Got it. So um, that's why like I had my mind made up. Notre Dame offered me and it was dope because like man, that's like Notre Dame. Like that's serious Notre business. Dame is serious business, right? Yeah. Um, I think, what was his name? Uh, I mean, not that Oregon is, but I mean, yeah, Notre I mean, Dame is the Coach history. Kelly was Notre there, Dame the Kelly was there at the time mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, it was serious. No, it was dope. Yeah. But I was just like, yeah. West Coast guy. I had Louisville. I was like talking to Bama. Louisville was, ACC. Yeah, you know. Um, I never talked to like Texas or anything like that. Right. But I committed early. I didn't get off from USC or, uh, or Stanford. So after you committed... Did you feel like the like sort of that that weight was lifted off your shoulders, so to speak? You got uh, committed. You achieved that D one sort of goal, right? Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, go yeah. to play D one football. You don't know what the future is gonna be, right. other than the fact of what you know you could do yourself, right. right? Did you find that you were able to play freer, even at high school, once that weight was lifted off your shoulders? Like you could just go out there then and just like let it go. Like I'm just doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I felt more motivated because I'm like, like I'm an organ commit. 
Right. That was my mindset. Like, I'm an Oregon kid. I'm gonna go out here and ball. It's a big like, deal. Yeah, like I'm gonna go out here and ball. Like right. everybody wanted to go to Oregon. Like right. you know, all the gear and jerseys and whatnot. You get automatic course, respect, but just by walking on the field. Yeah, like oh, that's the Oregon commit. And so like yeah. during seven on seven, like we would go around playing and whatnot. And I committed to Oregon, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, that's the Oregon commit. Like Javon Holland, da da da. Right. And so that summer, I went to uh, the opening. This was the last time that they had the opening, the Nike opening in in actual Beaverton. The next year, they took it to like Texas and whatnot. So. It's me and my, one of my best friends, Steve Stevens. We committed the same. Well, he committed April 31st or April 20th, 30th or something, and I committed the next day. And I was, like, solidified on committing cool. because he committed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, bet, like, let's do it. So to this day, I mean, he's still up there right now. He's wearing number seven. He plays safety. But, uh, yeah, like, after that, everybody was like, oh, yeah, it's Oregon commit Javon Holland. And I'm, like, well-known around the Bay in, in high school. Sure. Um, and it was cool, like, in that in that scene, being that kind of guy. Like, right. oh, yeah, that's Javon Holland. He's Young come kid walking around. Right. And I was, I'm always, I've always been humble and whatnot. Like, right. I, I've never tried to, like, be cocky or nothing like that. But it was just cool being able to be in that light. Like, right. I'm, I'm really doing it, coming out of the bay. Um, That's your first taste of notoriety, right? There. Yeah, that was, like, my first taste. Okay. It was cool. So now you arrive on campus at Oregon, right? Right. As expected? Yeah, man. Oregon was dope. Like, it was, Oregon was, like, I'm a, nat I like being out in nature and whatnot. That's why I liked going to Oregon. Right. Um. And it was beautiful when I got there. It was hot. You know, all the athletes were all together. Like, the way this school was set up, like, the JQA was, like, the student athlete center. So you got to see, like, track team, volleyball, mm -hmm. like, football, basketball. Everybody's in the same area. So you got to know everybody quickly. Right. It was cool. Like, it was real, real college-like real quick. So Nice. Yeah, it was awesome. Hey, start playing right away as a freshman? Yeah. So um, it kind of felt like. I was seen as like, oh, yeah, this is another dude coming in, like, kind of like, just like playing me off kind of thing. Right. And I was cool with it because I enjoyed being the underdog because I'm like, I'm going to prove to them, like, right. what I'm about. That was the challenge. That's yeah. what got you So going. The, spring, the spring break before me arriving, I went up there for like two weeks or for a week, and I got the playbook from my D.C. And when I came home, I was just studying the playbook when I was at the crib. Right. Like, over the summer or whatnot. So, boom. Then we fast forward. I'm moving up there. Like, me and my dad have already gone through the playbook like hell of times, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, first thing I do is go buy a whiteboard, put up my wall in my, in my, in my, uh, in my apartment. I just start writing down all the plays and everything, like all the calls and shit. We get to practice, and I like know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm out there understanding the plays, understanding the- Right I mean, like, from the beginning of Right fall. from the beginning. Yeah. Like, we, we started- Or in summer, the, you started in yeah, summer, right? So it was player run practices. Right. Um, in like, like July. July, right. yeah. yeah. And this was before camp. And Which I don't, I don't, I don't think people realize how unusual that is for an incoming freshman, right? Incoming yeah, like, freshman, a lot of times they like to fuck around. They want to go, you know, go to parties. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of freshmen like to say they're serious. on the football team, right, right, right? And they're working, you know, they're going, doing what they have to do. But yeah. I don't know if they realize how much of a dedicated mind it takes to actually start playing from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I was locked in. Like, I was, like, there for a reason, you know what I mean? Like, this is this is just, like, another stopping point. I'm trying to get to the league. Like, that's that's my goal. Right. At the same time, I was still enjoying myself. So, like, don't get that your wrong. freshman year, like, you were, like, better. literally, I want to be, I want to make, I want to make it to the NFL. I want to play in the NFL. From second grade, I was saying, I want to play in the NFL. So No, but when I'm saying, when you got to Oregon, that that's when the, the thought in your mind was, like, this is a reality. I'm on a path to get there. No, like, I'm telling you right now, like, it's always been a, like, I'm on a path to get to the league. Like, you okay, know I mean? so there was never a doubt in your mind never growing up that you were gonna play in the NFL. Yeah, there was never a doubt. Actually, seventh grade, we went, we went oh seven and one right. in PJFL, and I was like, asked my mom, like, yo, like, what if I don't play football? My mom was like, ah, that's probably not an option. I was like, all right, cool. After that, <laughs> after that point, I was locked in. I was like, yes, that's about I mean, it. It's in your that's blood. You gotta play. No, literally, yeah. it is. It really is. And so it got to a certain point. Like, my brother went to a, a smaller, a smaller school for college. So it got to a point where I'm at Oregon, right? So I'm like, I've Done what my brother does, like now I'm trying to get to where my dad was at. Right, you right. Know what I mean, it's like uh -huh. my, my focus shift. Uh -huh. right? And um, so your family was kind of like your motivation a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. like, I don't want my dad to be, I don't know, we're like old and I'm talking to my kids. Right. And like my dad's like, oh yeah, no, he didn't make it to the league. Right. <laughs> nah, 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 that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. I need uh -huh. bragging rights. I need bragging rights, man. So right, right, that was right. my focus like right. the whole time. So I get there in my freshman year and like I'm locked in, like really locked in. I'm with the threes at first, the threes, the fours, right? And like, you know, I'm just. Being patient, because I know it's not my time. Of right. course, I'm there, you know, it's rookie year. I mean, my freshman year. I got guys there that are, like, you know, four years in, five years in. Sure. They're trying to get to the league. There's no reason for me to be, try to, like, aggressively take their job or whatnot while they're also trying to get to the league, get to the next level. So I'm just, you know, waiting for my time, waiting for my opportunities. Um, and then in camp, we were doing one-on-ones. I always remember this because uh, my homeboy, Red, who I was guarding at the time, he's like, a quick, like, scat back. Um, everybody was, like, hyping it up. I'm like, I'm up. Let me go on one-on-ones, like, in the slot. 
Everyone's like gassing it up. This player run practices. The coaches are in their office, but they're watching us. Right. So he runs like a like an out up and out. And I clamp that shit, catch it, <laughs> kick six, whole defense running down, <laughs> throw the ball. I'm like, I'm like that. <laughs> so from that point on, it was like they're like, okay, like this kid's serious. Like he you know, he knows what he's talking about. Right. He knows what he's doing. So love yeah. it. Okay, so you, you go through that whole process and and you you're you know, all pack, first team, second team, third team, all mm-hmm. you know, honors program, right? Like right. Make, get all these accolades and awards. When in your mind did you start focusing on making it and, and actually the draft? So the draft I started focusing on because you know I went through my twenty nineteen year, we won the Rose Bowl. Right. Yeah. And then, I was gonna ask if you if you played in any bowl games. Yeah, yeah. So I played in uh, I played in the Rose Bowl and I played in the Red Box Bowl. My freshman year was the Red Box Bowl, which was that, in the Bay Area. That was twenty nineteen, you said? Twenty eighteen was the Red Box Bowl. And then 19. that was against Michigan State. Okay. I had a pick there. And then uh the Rose Bowl, that was twenty nineteen. Um, that was our most recent. That was when we won the Pac twelve championship. Uh, we played Auburn my, that first year. That was the year we played Auburn. Was the Rose Bowl in the CFB that year? No. No, it wasn't in that year. Okay. I think the year before it was mm, – I think the year before it was, but not in our year. No, yeah. No, we were not in the Her, uh Herbert was a quarterback? Yeah, Herb. that was Herb's last year. Um, so, That's that was – Herbert's last year, that was uh, our whole office alliance last year, except for Panay. Um, and the so coach was right. Cristobal? Yeah, Cristobal was our coach okay. at the time. Avalos was our DC. Uh, yeah, and then so I'm thinking, boom, like junior year, like it's, it's like my year. You know, right. I was the only un, uh, underclassman on the Thorpe award mm-hmm. list. So I'm like, I'm trying to go get the Thorpe. Like that's the greatest, the best DB that year. Like I'm trying to be that person. Sure. Um, and then COVID hit, which like everybody yeah. else in the world, it just kind of derailed their whole plan. You know the whole I mean? season. The whole yeah. season. Yep. So COVID hit, we all went home. Our coach, this crazy shit, our coach was like, yeah, like, you guys buy your flights home. Like, I don't know when you can buy them back. Like, you guys just stay home for the time being. Wow. Which right. Which is crazy. Yeah, they sent crazy. us home with, like, you know, like, bands, like, yoga bands and shit right. like that. Keep yourselves in right. shape. So my dad's, a, my dad's a personal trainer. He's got his own gym. And whatnot. Oh, okay. Got so I was at home, like, just okay, doing what I was doing yeah, in high school. Working like, working out. out, like, training and whatnot. Um, but for the other guys, like, they didn't have that luxury. So, uh, yeah, like, COVID hit and... All throughout the spring, we didn't get any spring work in, no spring conditioning, nothing like that. Summer hit, we could come back, and we ended up coming back and just like working out with like uh, like these just masks that they had on, and that was like all summer we out there running. And doing, so it was terrible. That's gotta yeah, be that's not fun. It was brutal, but I mean, it low key helped me conditioning wise because like we're wearing like a cloth mask over our face, and I'm sweating, and it's right. hot, and I have it's like, hard to breathe, hard to breathe because it's like water in my face, and it's cloth. Low key like waterboarding me as I run, <laughs> so I'm like trying to breathe through that shit, so I can barely breathe. But then like after I took it off, I'm like flying around, never tired. I should low key work, man. But um, <laughs> right, but yeah, so it's they like count. altitude training. Yeah, like altitude training basically. Yeah. But yeah, so going, so we're, well, they haven't canceled our season at this point. Like, right. we're still training as if the season's gonna, like, we're gonna about to get into camp. Right. So, like, July 22nd or so, like, right before we start camp, they canceled our season. And everybody's kind of like, all right, what now? Yeah, like, oh, what now? Like, what are we gonna do? And they did the same thing, like, you guys go home. Like, there's no reason for you to stay here. Right. So, how does that work, like, eligibility wise? Well, so COVID year, they basically just scratched the COVID off everybody. Yeah, yeah, everybody got it. Yeah, 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 just allowed everybody. everybody yeah, like, when they, when they, they asked guys, their we have a guy on our team, uh, on, the guy that goes to Oregon, he's a place tight end. Mm-hmm. He got a couple injuries, so he would have been like a sixth year this year. Yeah. Because of COVID, he's a seventh year. So right. they said, oh, he's sixth year plus COVID. Dude right. literally right. is like playing like 10 years in college. Literally, like he's like, <laughs> it's crazy. That's, right? that's the kicker for UM is he's tatted from head to toe and he's been at UM for like eight years. Yeah. It's, it's like, like Harry Potter years. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, that's kind of the same thing as, like, guys that go to Utah or, like, schools that have missions. Because, like, you go right. to school, you right. go on a mission, uh, and you come yeah. back. Okay, and gotcha. you're now, like, like uh, what's his name? Like now? a graduate student or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a dude, uh, Covey. He plays receiver for the Eagles. He went to Utah. When I was playing in my freshman year, he was, like, 26. I'm Jeez. 18. Way. Yeah, like, he's because he just got back from his, his mission. Wow. So, he's, Damn. like, 26. I'm, like, 18. What does that do for your draft prospect, right? Like, you know, everybody when you're, says, oh, when you're older, older. Yeah, that's actually a good question. When you're older, it's, like, difficult. I wouldn't say it's difficult because, like, I'm, I was, like, I'm, like, super young. But it's, like, you know, you have more years on you. It depends on the position. Like, running back, if you're coming out of yeah. running back and you're, like, 25, 26, it's, like, yeah, he doesn't have that much time. Like, he's got a lot of mileage on his legs, mm-hmm. especially at running back, such a contact-heavy position. Yeah. Right. Linebacker, same thing. Right. But like, receivers and whatnot, like, if a guy's older, you know, it's probably more mature and whatnot, handles himself well. So right. Depends on the position. Um, right. But for, like, for a DB, for me, like, 
I mean, it wasn't really, really wasn't an issue. Like, I was 21 coming out with my third year, which just kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm a early. Uh, I mean, I left early, so right. You were the first safety taken. Yeah, yeah, I was first safety taken in my class. Yeah, yeah. first safety taken. And class. who were, who was like some of the you know some of the uh, older guys that you looked up to like when you were younger, like in terms of what your influences were when you were when you knew that you were going to be a defensive a de- defensive force, right? Uh, like Ed Reed, uh, Ty mm-hmm. Matthew, when he was at LSU, and even in the league too. Yeah, um, right. Um, yeah. I watched Dermon for Dermon for a long time. He was my uh, coach when I was at the opening. Uh, Bob Sanders. I don't know if he played. Uh, he was defensive player of the year as a safety. He's like five eight. He was like a monster. Really? Yeah, he was a monster. Damn. Um, yeah, guys like that. You know, just like Brian Dawkins. Brian Dawkins. Yeah, yeah. Sean Taylor. Oh like, my like, god, he's yeah. a maniac. Crazy, like yeah. real monster. Go back, we'll go old school. Where I think your dad's old team, Ronnie Lott, right? Yeah, Ronnie Lott too. Like yeah. Ronnie Lott is a monster. Oh, shit. No, you're good. Oh, don't worry. Cramped up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh, I thought it was the, I nah, it was the nah, high. Nah, nah. Someone Cramped get the up. mustard. Yeah. Yeah. Someone get the mustard. It happens at the high line, man. We yeah. just, you know, we come out and bite you. But um, <laughs> athlete life. Yeah. yeah so you gotta hydrate, um, especially in Miami. Um, so, so when you when you kind of thought about those guys, was it, you know, just being a smart player, or was it like I just want to lay fucking bricks on people? I like interceptions, honestly. Like I didn't, I'm like I didn't become like a physical player, right? Like, I kind of just grew into that role here. Like, I was just kind of like, okay, if somebody wants to set the tone, like, I'm yeah, not going to set the you, tone. You, you've laid some pretty big-ass hits out there. Yeah, right? yeah, like, but I've never been that. Like, I've always been like, I want to, like, I want the ball. Like, that's my that's my thing. Even now, like, I want the ball. Like, I don't right. know, You know what I mean? So, um, do you like remember in college if you ever had any of those big, big yeah, hits? Yeah, yeah, I actually had taste. a big hit. Washington State, so we were practicing. I played nickel in, 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 in college in my second year. Right. So, I was in a curl flat drop, which basically, like, you know, the flat player. Right. They always ran this, like. Mike Leach, he has like he runs like six plays, but like seventy times, and they all work. So they run like this this low cross, and I was watching it all week. And they run it with like this bigger receiver where he won over twelve. Um, and in the game, I know the exact like exact situation <laughs> down in distance. I was like, this play is coming. Like I know it's on the way. And I he dropped sent you a telegram. And I seen him running across. I was like, mm-hmm. oh yes, yeah, over. And I could not. I, I low key paused for a second because I wanted him to catch the ball just so I could hit him. So you timed it perfectly. Timed it perfectly. Boom! Dumped you, him on his head. Got up. Flex everything. Oh, <laughs> and, that, and that and that and was that, that was that first moment. That was that first like man. That was like a big hit. Like I was yeah. like, yeah, like. Did I'm, he shit himself? No, 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 no. He got like, like you know jog back, but I was like, I mean, he got up slow. Right. But he jogged back and whatnot. <laughs> right. But I just like was juice because like, I got worked on that. Oh, that's when I really realized like film and preparation like really help you. Take a next step in the game, yeah. and that—that's like the right. first point. Where I was like, okay, like I kind of need, need to like you know get. Yeah, up without the film, you would have never made that play. Yeah, yeah, without studying, I wouldn't have made that play. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, film could also be your biggest enemy where you get really embarrassed in the in the, in the film room. Yeah, man, I understand. I don't lie. So. I've been embarrassed many a times in film room. I mean, they had film back in my day too. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you could, you know, you get caught up in a game, you miss an assignment, oh, like you make a bad team, play, like getting roasted by and, your then, and then your coaches are running uh, through that film, and they just highlight it, and they go uh, back and back and yeah. back, especially oh, you know when you're younger. Maybe yeah. I don't know so much of the no, pros. They go back and back. You know when the play's coming too? Yeah. Like play, and you're just like, this, and I'm just like this. <laughs> I'm just like this in my chair. Yeah, you're just like watching it. You know, like I'm just like, man. <laughs> Some coaches I don't just ever be called out in that room. Uh, ever. And there's plenty of guys that just get called out in that room, and that's bad. I Especially if you out. keep getting called out right. in that room. And right. the thing is, is like when guys get called out, you're kind of just watching it, like, okay, like I know he can like, you know, make that play. It'll be right. right. But in his mind, he's like, damn, like they, oh, I messed up. Like, it's embarrassing. Yeah. Everybody's down on me, right? But like, no, everybody has the same mentality. So exactly. right. when I, when if I mess up and I look at the play, I'm like, damn, like I gotta be better. Everybody's like, no, nah, we know you're gonna be better, bro. I know you're trips. So. Uh, you're drafted in the second round, 36th pick, 36th pick overall. Mm-hmm. What is that like for you, your family? It was a, uh, it was surreal, man. So like, after I got done my pro day, because we didn't have the draft that year. Uh, after I got my done my pro day, it was kind of like a, I was just like, it's, it's on them now. It's not right. me. I've done all I can. Right. I performed well in my pro day. I was happy with my performance. And so it was just about like the waiting game now. Um, so I wasn't nervous at all up until the second day. The first day, my agent was like, hey, like you could go late in the first, like, but we don't know. Like you yeah. haven't really given us any solid numbers. But like early second is like your kind of your thing. Right. I'm like, all right, cool. So first day goes by, like I'm watching it, nothing really crazy. My family was kind of like, oh, sorry, like I'm sorry you didn't go first round. Yeah. But I'm like, it's good. Like I knew yeah. that I wasn't, I probably wouldn't have gone first round. There are also right. other safeties going. Right. So. Which I was fine with. I right. just wanted to be the first safety off the board. It's also yeah. position specific. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's going to be at least it's like seven it, quarterbacks in the first round. Yeah. Sure. So what a team needs. Day two, boom. I'm wearing whatever. Get up, get dressed. Like 
the drive's until later on, like three, four, five or something like that. So all my homeboys come over, family's there. We got the cameras set up, like NFL Network cameras and whatnot. <laughs> So I'm, did you, I'm sorry, did you have any idea like what team it was going to be or so, was it going to be narrowed okay, down okay, to okay. a few teams, right, yeah, yeah, between yeah. some back channel conversation? So during the draft process, like I talked to thir all 32 teams, right? right? And I was talking to the Ravens a lot. I was talking to the Seahawks a lot, the Rams a lot, the Falcons. A lot. I was talking to the Falcons like crazy. And I, that's who I thought was going to take me. You right. know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, the draft order was And were you okay Jets. going to Atlanta? I was go cool going anywhere. Man. You I just want to get drafted. Right. Um, the Jets... Then, oh no, it was the Jaguars and the Jets, then the Thank Falcons. Thank God you didn't go to the Jets. Then the Falcons, and then it was the, the Dolphins. So I'm like, I could go at any point in the first five picks. Yeah. So first pick was uh, Tyson Campbell, and I trained with him. That's my dog, TC. Mm -hmm. I was happy for him. I'm like, boom. Right. Tyson got drafted. Second one was Elijah Moore. That's my dog, too. Boom. So then it was like, the, I'm like, okay, the Falcons are next. I'm like, this could be, I could be going to Atlanta. Right. It was like, uh, Trade so the Dem Denver Broncos traded with the Falcons for pick five and pick three, so they switched. Mm -hmm. So I was uh -huh. like, okay, Denver's up. Yeah, I didn't barely, I barely talked to Denver at yeah. all. Like, right. I talked to them one time. Right. I know I'm not going there. Right. So I'm sitting there. Javante Williams got picked, but when they got the pick is in, my phone rang, and I'm like, I was like looking at the draft because my phone's ringing and I'm not seeing that it says 305, but I'm looking at the draft board. And I'm like looking for the, because the reel's coming. So it's like, like right. 28. So it's still going. And then it finally pops up. Mm -hmm. It's like Miami Dolphins. And I said, oh, shit. So now I was like, hey, everybody quiet down. My family's all like loud and shit. So I'm on the phone. And then it was uh, it was Chris Greer. He was like, hey, how you doing, Javon? Like Chris Greer, GM of the Dolphins. Nice to meet you. At that point, I'm like not hearing anything. I'm just saying like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Talking to Flo, talking to Steven Ross. And then the pick was in for Javante Williams. So my name is Javon. His name is Javante Williams. It sounds like my name. Right. As yeah. soon as my family heard the, the first part of his name, right. and they started screaming. <gasps> I'm still on the phone. I'm like, <laughs> I look around like, why is everybody calling? Like, Did I miss it? Or, I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Javante Williams, everybody quiets down. And then I get off the phone. And like, where are we going? I'm like, going to Miami. Like, <laughs> I was jumping up and down. Okay, so you didn't wait till the pick came across. The no, team. no, no. You just told everybody. Right, right, right. right. So then, because they could call me, tell me I'm going to be drafted, and they pick somebody else. Right. right. So I'm like, I don't think people understand. They that, don't understand right? that. They, yeah. that they, yeah. That's happened to a lot of people before. Right. So boom, then like, which is kind of fucked up. Right. Man. So then the Isley brothers came up and like the Miami Dolphins pick is in. So everybody's like dead silent, quiet. I'm sitting there. I'm like, damn. I got the hat right behind me because you know I got the hat right on. <laughs> right. Camera's right there. Camera's right. not live yet. So I'm like sitting there, sitting there. And it's like, Javon Holland. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's <laughs> that was juice, bro. That was like. That's awesome. Yeah, it was like super. Yeah, it was like, special. It's incredible. Really, like, really, like, really hit that, hit that goal from since you were such a young age, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. It was, it was you get weird. emotional or not? Not emotional. Uh, it wasn't. Nah, I didn't get like, I didn't, I didn't like cry or anything. I bet your parents like, did. Yeah, I think my mom did. I think yeah. my dad was just like. My, was when, when, when things are like super big, my dad's like real emotional. He just gets quiet. He's just right. sitting there like. So I knew he was really emotional. My grandma was there. Right. Yeah, it was a lot. And then my, so my uncle, my dad's oldest brother, he's been a Dolphins fan since like 83. And they've like not been good for that whole time. Really? Yeah. So we're like starting to get good again, right? Right. And when I got drafted, that was a, and my uncle's like a prison guard, like real rough around the edges, ex-military. Like he's just like a dog. Mm -hmm. And when I got drafted and they came to the draft party, like this is the first time I've ever seen him like, with like raw, raw emotion. He had like tears in his eyes. He was so happy. He was like, I tried to tell him, bro. Like, I tried to tell him. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. It was, it was crazy, man. It was that, crazy. That is awesome. Yeah, so, it so you show up to work the first day. What was it like? Uh, showing up to work the first day. I mean, I was like how I am now. Like I was bright eyed and bushy tailed. Like I was just. Same was, thing as Oregon. It, yeah, you know what I mean? I was like, hey, how you doing? Like introduce myself to everybody. Uh -huh. and, like, you didn't know anybody on the team like personally? Uh, yeah. No, nah, I knew Jalen, Jalen Waddle, like okay. just because we had gone to the same camp together like a minute ago and we right. just had kind of mutual friends. Um, but I didn't really know anybody like personally, personally. And so I played against uh, Shabbat and Wiles. Uh -huh. <laughs> but other than that, like, no, nah, not for real. And um, yeah, like I, immediately off the jump though, the rookie class, like we bonded together super quick. We became tight. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of had their click, like, you know, hang right. out. Um, so, but no, we were tight. But regardless, I was just like, hey, how you doing? Introduce myself to everybody. Like, and all the people that are there, the trainers and the, the, the players now, they're like, oh, well, like, this is just a rookie. Like, you could be cut by tomorrow. Like, we don't know. Like, right. you just got to make the team type thing. Right, know? right, right. And so, um, I remember one of our trainers was like, like, 
the doctor said that, or the dentist said I needed to like fill up, to, uh, get this tooth removed. And I was like, oh yeah, can you like schedule that? He's like, you need to make the team before you worry about any of that. That was like my first moment. I was like, hey, yeah, but like, yeah, let me ask you a question. I mean, you got drafted, you, you, you get a contract, right? I mean, is the first year more of like when you're, when you're drafted and you're drafted that high? Is the first year more of like somewhat of a pass? I'm not saying that they couldn't cut a, 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 a you know, in a, a way, top second. In a round, way, yeah. You know, in a like way, in a way. Definitely. Unless you're like a menace in, in the in the locker room, right? And, yeah, you know, yeah. Not doing way. your job. I mean, you're a high draft pick, so of course they're like, you know, we're drafting you to like help. You know, right. We need we need help in the right. In I mean, position. otherwise they're wasting a second round. Of course, right? yeah. yeah. Like, why would you draft somebody if you're not going to pick if you're not going to yeah, play them? Not, you right. Know what right. I mean? So. Um, Kind of in a way, it was like that, but that was not my mentality at all. Like, I was nervous. Like, when cuts came, I was like, bro, like, I hope I did enough. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that was my mindset. Really? Um, yeah, because I was just like, I, and I was working hard, and I was doing I was doing well in camp. Did you find it difficult in camp, when in with the transition from college? No, nah, no, nah, yeah. I didn't find it difficult. Yeah. I felt like there was more that I had to do, which I enjoyed because I'm like, okay, I'm growing. Like, I, right. know, I have stuff yeah. to work on. And that's right. usually my mentality when I face, like, you know, some type of adversity. I'm like, okay, I have something to work on that I can, like, really pinpoint. Right. Um, and that alone was like, just just going from college to pros, and then like being a high draft pick, but in the in the space that I was in um, down in my down here, it's like my mindset was like, okay, I need to help the team win. You know what I mean? Right. And so, um, yeah, from like when I first from when I first got in there, I was just trying to learn as much as possible, as quick as possible, like earn my teammates' respect basically, so I can just be comfortable and like I can just play full like just full speed, so just they can do, trust me. Do, do what you got to do. Yeah, just do what I had to do. So. Yeah. Okay, so this year, let's fast forward to this year now. Now, Mike McDaniel's the new coach over mm -hmm. there, right? How yeah. has that changed? That read the tone, you know, just the, the chemistry maybe or, you know, the game well, plan. I want to I ask him how it went from being like a 1-8 team to finishing over 500. Uh, it was crazy because, like, there's a lot of games in the season. Yeah. So when we were 1-8, I'm thinking, I'm low-key, like, in the college mindset, like, it's over. Like, we're about to – it's over for us. Like we're yeah. we're getting cooked. Yeah. Like it's guys, crazy. do you guys take their foot off the gas at that point and like just go through the motions? No, nah, it was more like, it was more like, or is, or is we everybody just, grind just like, it out the rest of the season? Right. Like, let's just grind it out the rest of the season. <laughs> see where it right. goes. Yeah. So after we played, uh, we played the Ravens for our eighth game, ninth game, because we were one to seven. The week before we played the Falcons, and we were like just on the verge of winning to kick the field goal to beat us, to make us one to seven. Right. I was like, bro, like, this sucks. Like, we suck. We got it. And then, and at, like, I was talking to my dad about it. He was like, there's nothing you can do but, like, try to win. So you might as well just, like, keep working hard. Yeah. Right. So then it was a short week, too, because we had a Thursday night game. So we played the Falcons. That's when, like, we, like, I blitzed, like, 40 times or something like that. Right. And I was just like, we just got to beat the Falcons, and then we're – I mean, uh, beat the Ravens, and then we're on our way. Like, we're – fuck it. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, – that was our mindset, and we ended up beating the Ravens, and then went on the streak. We played Houston, and then mm -hmm. people getting interceptions. We played the Carolina Panthers, and but after that, it was like, okay, you know, we kind of, kind of, we kind of getting there. Like, you know, we're kind of doing our thing. And then right. We just started chugging along. What a crazy run. A crazy run. So yeah, I, no, it absolutely was, and I think it set the table. Now that Mike McDaniel comes in, right? He's but he's yeah. an offensive guy. Right. You're a defensive guy. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, has there been that, you know, connectivity between you and he as a head coach or? Yeah, yeah. I think as a whole organization, as a whole team, there's okay. a lot of, you know, connectivity mentally and everybody right. has the same mindset. Um, guys buy in right away from yeah, the get-go yeah. when he I got think, there? I think guys did buy in. I think guys did mm -hmm. buy in. I bought in and I was like, you know, there's nothing else to do but buy in. Right, right. Is, you know, we're right, right. So it's the benefit of the doubt right away. Right. Like, you know, I, I believe in him regardless just mm -hmm. because that's coaching yeah. it's better to have belief in the coach but rather than going against him because then it causes you know friction and whatnot right so yeah i 100 percent believe in them from, from not your coach. normal head coach in the nfl no not really not really <laughs> you, you know, know he's kind of a he's a he's an interesting dude but, yeah you know he has his ways and his super ways smart his ways. His super smart dude yeah his resume is crazy yeah his resume is crazy crazy he's been, he's been evolved in football in the nfl for, for a long, long time a long time a really long time so. yeah yeah, I had no doubt. And I mean, he's an offensive minded head coach. We had the same defensive staff, minus a couple guys uh, come back. Mm -hmm. So I was cool with that, same defense. So really, I was like going into camp and into this this year. Like, it's my second year. This is my first time being in a, a defense at a high level for two years in a row. Right. Because it, it would have been in two years for 2020, but our season got canceled. Right. And in 2018, our, D, our DC changed. So it was more comfortable for me to learn more in depth about the about the defense and whatnot, and so I was I was fully logged in. Right. I, oh, that's awesome. So now we're talking about you know just reaching higher yeah. and higher levels. I think we have some some 
uh, some footage here we wanted to ask you about. But, you know, I want to specific, specifically ask you about game three this year, or week three, I should say. You know, you're playing the Bills, right? Mm -hmm. 96 snaps. Yeah. Heat. You yeah. set the record, right? Is that, is that I, That's I a defensive record in, yeah, for the Dolphins? Yeah, for yeah. the Dolphins. I mean, 96. Guys are, like, literally I, – I mean, you can see it. They're dying. Yeah, man, it was a, uh, it was brutal. And my, and my, this is the thing. So we're playing. I'm not even, I don't even know the rep count. Like, we're just out there playing, and we just keep going out there, keep going out there. Like, you look like you could have gone longer. I could have. I was out on the field. And I'm like, man, I am tired as hell right now. <laughs> I'm like, I just got to keep going, like keep pushing, and that's like the way I practiced, um, like since training camp, like just push myself, push myself, right, until you know I cramp up or whatever. God, and I never yeah. really got to that point. Like, so in the game, I just kept on going, kept on going, and I almost cramped in my calf on the goal line because I, like, broke quick and I felt in my calf. I kind of, like, stopped, drank, went, drank, drank hella PD light, and that was good. But um, after the game, like, you know, we're bringing it up, we're talking, we won the game and whatnot, and I'm sitting on my, in my locker, and I'm like, bro, like, I am dead right now. Like, I need help. Uh, like, yeah, it was ridiculous. And they were like, bro, you played 96 snaps. And the, and the next day must have been The other worse. team has to be in the sun out there <clears throat> during the game. Yeah, it's like 30 Sucks. degrees hotter over there. On the, yeah, they are dying. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. They call timeout or any, like, TV break, like, Helmet off, on a knee, drink of water. Like it yeah. had to have been 110 degrees on that field, Probably right? Brutal. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know how you do it, but it's definitely yeah, it a, was new, a new level of respect for you. So let's go four days later, right? I'm sure you, everybody in the team, including yourself, has been asked about this. In that game, Tua takes an interesting hit. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he, he hits his head pretty hard. Gets up, he starts stumbling. After the game, post game, you know, uh, interviews and stuff like that, point two oh is a back issue, right? Mm -hmm. Four days later, he's playing in the Chiefs, he goes down. Not the Chiefs, Bengals. I mean, the Bengals, sorry, you're <laughs> right. Um, and, he, and he goes down with what didn't appear to be a big hit, right? right? Um, it was a little little bit weird, like it almost looked like a body slam, but it, like, I don't recall, but it, like it fell over somebody and then it went down. I've watched a lot of football, like you, like a lot of people out there. It was probably one of the most scariest reactions I've seen of somebody that after a hit, right, yeah. on the field, right? Yeah. It was like, a lot of times, in a way, it was a lot worse than just watching a guy that's just laying there and then they cart him off, right? Right, right, right. This was, was like, there was a physical reaction. Hands, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. Hands that's what really got me, like, the hands part was really... How did that play on your mind as a player going forward from that moment on, as well as some of the guys that are on the sideline ready to go in, yeah. you know, and whatnot? It was like, it was just kind of like a... It's a wake up. Scary moment. moment. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, damn, like, football is, like, really dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's certain techniques that we use so that we, you know, keep each other safe. Right. But when that happened, I was like – and it, it wasn't, like, the guy that – the tackle did anything wrong. Like, Tua was trying to stay up. Right, right. Yeah, no, look legit. Yeah, I was yeah, trying to make, a, ta yeah, to make a tackle, and it just – because of his momentum, yeah. right, his weight his swinging weight, yeah. down, it, like, based, like you said, like, body, body slam Tua straight to the ground. Right. And but was, it did. But the head didn't hit first. It was his back. It was his. It was like his yeah. uh, like his shoulder, and then he just bam. Like but right. did it bounce? His head like bounced off the yeah, turf. Yeah, it like huh? bounced off the turf. Which probably at the end of the day, in retrospect, was probably a gr a good thing. That, that his shoulder hit first. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was straight head. It right. Was like yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, no, nah, that was it was surreal, bro. Especially when I saw the replay and I like seen his hands lock up. Right. That's what got me. I was like, wow, like. We were watching. He got sick. I think we were watching it on yeah, TV. Yeah, out. you know, like that's. And I've been around like like bad stuff. Like last year, we played the Tennessee Titans, and the tight end had broke his leg. And so I was in the. I was like on top of the pile that he like when he broke his leg. I got up, and his leg is like in an L shape. Oh. And I'm like, oh my god! Everybody's like, oh my god! Like at that point, like no one on no one, we're not playing anymore. At that point, everybody's kind of like just like, oh my, like get him help, like every, like get the yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. But isn't it interesting that the mentality is that when you're out there and there's the injuries are not present, right, mm -hmm. or obvious, right? That everybody's like looking at is is it isn't it that everybody's just really looking at like just to nail that other guy when yeah, he's coming across yeah, the ball. Like I'm but to then when something unfortunate like that happens, the mentality quickly changes. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, like even though we're trying to win a game, even though like we're still playing a game though, like we're talking about yeah, like this is livelihood, it's right. a way of life. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And like to see that, to see two like that, yeah. everybody was like, damn, like we, like that was serious. I've watched a lot of football. I'm crazy. a lot older than all you guys. Are you just got to play on right after that. It's yeah, you got to play on. You know what I mean? And you kind of try to try to forget it. And you do, like, you know, because adrenaline kicks back up. Right, and right, Focus right. on the next play and whatnot on your assignment. But I was just like, it was crazy. That's the thing about football, though. It's always, like, next man up. You know what I mean? That's what they always say. Well, yeah. I, I mean, yes, it's next man up. But when you when you see a serious injury like that, yeah, it's, of course. You know, 
it, it, it gives everybody a reason to be like, whoa, this is reality, yeah. here, right? This yeah. is someone's life. I mean, the first thing I thought about, because I'm, I'm a father, I'm, I'm, I used to be, you know, as young as you guys. And the first thing I thought about is that, man, that guy might not ever play his ukulele ever again, right? Because he's known as playing <laughs> that ukulele because oh, yeah, he's from yeah, Hawaii, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he, like, he, he's played that in interviews. Mm. And it's the mindset that I thought to myself was, he is he, the simple things, just the simple things at this point. Not about will he play football. Again. Right. It's like will he actually live a good life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was the thing that I that went through my head because right. that was one of, that was definitely one of the scariest things I saw. Yeah, it was tricky, man. It yeah. was it was serious business. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Is it savage though? He's trying to run through people. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, he's a competitor. He's gonna play the way he wants yeah. to play because right. that's how he is. You know what I mean? And that's. Right. I, I don't I don't mind it if he wants to play that way he's gonna play that way right yeah. it may make people nervous for sure. yeah it's sure, definitely I'm sure the coach is like eh, two legs a lot like, yeah. you know what I mean? but, like uh, slide. but I think he needed to do that psychologically to just you know just get back out there and just yeah, say hey I'm okay because like that's how he is yeah. though like last year he was trying to run people over anyway so right. I was yeah. like you know when I saw that it fired me up I'm like all right like you know he's back kind of yeah thing. yeah he's back oh, yeah it's yeah, yeah. He's, and he's yeah, good yeah. so he just has a he just has maybe adjust for longevity sake you know. So, you know, how, how have your, how many interactions have you had literally with fans? I'm not talking about just like playing, playing, mm -hmm. you know, out there and just like your people cheering you on. Like in the store? So like yeah, just like people like, do they yeah. recognize you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. When we're walking up, when we're walking up, one of the valet guys goes, hey, dude, keep, keep up the good work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff is cool, man. I, so for me, my perspective on that is like, if I'm out and I see like LeBron James, obviously I want to ask for a pick. I'm gonna go up to him and be like, "Yo, you're, you're LeBron James, right. Like, right? You know what I mean? I might not never, I might not never see him again. Yeah. So for people to come up to me like, "Yo, Holland, like, can I get a pick?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course, man." Like, yeah. But that's interesting, right? Because LeBron James might look at you and say, "Oh, that's my peer. He's a fellow professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Not my sport, but he's right. you know a fellow professional athlete." Right. With people, just in general, the everyday guy, they'll go up to athletes, and athletes are like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I yeah, you know, some." Or like you, Some where they say like, yeah, come on, you know, we'll take right. a pick. And I think that that's where the sort of the, the disconnect and sort of being level peers, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Because athletes are, are kind of held to a level of being like a superhero, right? right? right. And they're, they're admired, mm -hmm. right? For, yeah. In a variety Looked of different up to. ways. Absolutely. Sorry? Looked, Looked up to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looked up to. So, you know, and that's kind of like, you know, one of the things that we were talking about here is, you know, there's many different things that people do to try to connect more with athletes on mm -hmm. a, you know, sort of that level. And, you know, collecting being one of them, right? right. You know, we know a lot of people that collect. We were talking about collecting earlier. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's probably one of the craziest industries that I've ever seen in terms of, you know, a card like this, right. which happens to be you, by the way. I see. All right. That's this nice. is yours. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, we're going to hand nice. that over now. We'll talk about that in a second. But... You know, cards like this go for hundreds of dollars. It could go to for thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, sort of the chase for people who want to sort of have that connectivity with that athlete mm -hmm. and, and, and really collect guys that they think are going to be the next coming, yeah. right? Yeah. Some are already, like Tom Brady, Tom right? Brady. The all-time right. GOAT. And, and I think that that's, that's what's kind of interesting there. So what we've... You know, I always thought about was, you know, what if collecting and athletes really kind of came together on a more personal level, on a peer-to-peer -peer level, where there's an interaction between them that's kind of like meaningful. Like we're just sitting around here and shooting the shit. Right. And and you know, I think just for the sake of you know, just I know you're very new to it. This is not something you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You sign these cards, right? Mm -hmm. Just like a lot of athletes do. But one of the things that AP is going to do over here is going to break that box. You guys will have a little little pack war, right? See who pulls the best cards. Maybe even talk about some of the guys that you actually have played against or played with and whatnot. Right. And and see, you know, if we actually pull that rare card that's worth, you know, maybe a thousand bucks or more or whatever. Okay, it is. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, cool. you know, you guys get start ripping on that and then we could keep going and talk about that while you guys are you guys are doing that. Rip. We um, could all rip some packs. Yeah. So you guys you start ripping um, some packs. I had a question though, an interesting question, because I have to ask. Eight is an unconventional number for defensive back. Of course. And of course, the Dolphins, I mean, it's, it's eight and nine as safeties, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Nah, no place corner. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. like an unconventional number for, for a defensive back. Right. I like why, it. Why? Yeah, I like it too. Why number eight, though? Do you, it, so, um, lucky number eight, man. In high school, I, play, I won number three. And that was like okay. always been my favorite number. I was born March 3rd, 2000. It's like 3 3. Right. Third month, third day. 
Um, in college, I couldn't wear number three. We had a guy that had, had the number before me. So Try trade first? Not really. I didn't even ask for it, honestly. I was like, you know what? It's cool. Like, I don't right. even want to wear it. Uh, so I tried to wear 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like a lot of Oregon, like DBs that go to Oregon wear 13 that are really good. Right. So I was like, all right, cool. There, I had number 13. Um, Dylan Mitchell, who played receiver at the time, he also had 13. He was, we were on the same special teams. We were on pump mm-hmm. turn at the same time. Right. So I'm blocking. He's back returning. So the leadership council got together, and they basically were like, all right, we got to change so-and-so's number. What number do we want to give him? Lana, who played linebacker for us, uh, he was like, let's give him number eight. And it was big for me because, it, like, no one has worn it in a long time, mm-hmm. and it's Mariota's number. You know what I mean? He's like the GOAT at Oregon, like the right. GOAT. Literally, right. him and Sabrina are like the GOAT. So um, I came to my locker, and it was like number eight. I'm like, damn, like, all right. Like, uh, it's serious now. Yeah. And it was cool for me because eight and three are, like, you know, if you cut an eight and a half, it makes a three. Right. You know, right. If, if you if you mirror, yeah, 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 that's true. Or if you take a three like and a that. one, you put them, put them together, then it right. kind of makes eight. So, um, yeah, you know, I just I leaned into it, and uh, at that point, I was like, all right, I'm number eight. And then in college, it got from it went from like Javon to me being in class and like sitting down, and like, oh, you're number eight, aren't you, on the team? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm number eight. Like, and so in the, in, uh, in the league, like the year I got drafted in 2021, they're like, yeah, you can wear whatever number. Right. And so I've been making, like, my number in Madden and, like, NCAA 14, like, any time I went to college or any time I went to the pros, like, I'm number eight or, like, I'm number three or whatnot. Right. It's a single digit. Like, I wish I could play with a single digit. Right. So, boom, I get to the league. They give me 22 initially, right? And then um, yeah, uh, a good weird. friend of mine, Alan Hearns, had hurt his hand. And he went on IR because he broke his hand. So eight was available. So I'm Dude, looking at the coaches like, can I get my college number? Everybody in right. my class got their college number. J-Dub got 17. Right. Uh, JP got 15. Jared Doe's got 23. I'm like, yeah. Like, was that mean? asked before camp or during yeah, camp? Yeah, yeah. It was asked before camp. It but Alan before. had already changed it because he was wearing 18. He got, he, got, uh, he got eight. Right. And then he ended up hurting him, his hand. And then I was like, can I get it? Can I get that? So <laughs> <laughs> after, after camp, we had like a week, uh, like two weeks before the first game, switched my number to number eight. Right. And after that curtains awesome yeah all right yes sir all right so you you guys you guys start javon and i will go after we'll see we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see who, who who has the best cards here right and then I'm sure you you signed for this product i'm pretty sure am i popping this it's panini it's your favorite company man oh, yeah. panini shout out to panini <laughs> appreciate you guys man appreciate yeah you. appreciate you guys oh, so yeah. by the way now in this product right you're gonna pull what? You are, we want to pull. We want to pull it downtown. Down, it's For it's gold. a card called downtown. It's uh-huh. normally comes in one per case, and in a case, there's twelve of these boxes, so uh-huh. it's hard it's, to yeah, get. Yeah, it's rare. It's right. rare. It's like an insert they call it. And any uh, any numbered card is good. So like cards with serial numbers, anything. It's like this is this, the most of these cards are just base cards. They're okay. oh my goodness, I got a thick yeah. reprints. Oh, and then God. when you get here to the rated rookie. Uh-huh. That's like uh, all the rookie cards. So Felipe Franks rookie, and this would be no like an insert. Oh my god, Jay. <laughs> yeah. What? See, that's oh, like wow. a chaser. This Pretty is nice. a chaser right here. This so is like, a chaser, right? So what does that mean? Every, a chaser means like everybody wants ink, right? Right. And and ink, you know, even eight people say, like on that. This, in a, this is thick. Why yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because it's a. It's like their dual auto. Oh, this is dope. So how, like what this is like, people want this. One. So yeah. so that I mean, they want that card. I don't know what it's really worth. Really I don't know what it's worth. But if you like, were to go on eBay right now for this card, because that's like so that's where most cards are sold on is eBay. Uh-huh. It's a trusted marketplace. That means the rest cards. of this box is dog shit. <laughs> it's, I don't. I couldn't tell you why, but that's right. the marketplace. I pulled dog shit. Mainly people so far. use. Yeah, I just pulled. I pulled regular Zeke, Zeke regular Khalil Mack, Cam Hayward, and then a uh, Josh uh, Palmer rated rookie. That's not bad. I pulled the Stefan Diggs. Straight. Oh, that's nice. So you always want ink, and you always want the rookie. So the rookie cards would hold their value, you know? Okay. It's like, anybody could go out and get, like, a Brady from this year. Right. But getting a Brady from 03, you know, like, yeah. rookie year, I don't even know. How'd you find Diggs when you guys faced them, when you faced them in week three? How would you say? How'd you find Diggs when you faced them in, in week three? Sweet. Last year, so, you get him. He's elite. He's he he's the real deal, he's right? The real deal. Someone yeah. sold this card August fifteenth for seven eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Covers so it's a piece of cardboard that gives you know somebody a couple yeah. of bucks right yeah. there. Right. right. 
Not bad. Good. Not bad. I got Zonks. Ready rookie. Ooh, Cole Beasley. That would be a that would be a silver. When it's Eric like shiny Metcalf? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick Sertain. Hey, yeah, that's one. your competition in the league. He has no? two. Pat? Yeah. Yeah, that's my dog. So we train together. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We tra we train together. Yeah, that's your Kid's boy good. right there. Zon oh yeah, Jay Herb. He's got an arm. He's got a can little cannon. I've seen him make throws in practice I've never seen. Right. Like in college. I was like, wow, this is yeah. like, who's that? This is not normal. Herbert. Herbert. Oh, Herbert. Herbert, Herbert, Herbert. Yeah, no, he's got a great arm. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. He's extremely, he's extremely, his whole family's like extremely athletic though too. You saw the game this year where his ribs were literally looked broken and he just wouldn't come out of the game? Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. That was in Kansas City, was it? Yeah. Yeah. TJ yeah. Moore. Got a Monra. Oh, I got JC. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. It's his rookie card. Yeah. Zach Wilson. What's a uh, raid rookie? Oh, that's nice. That's out of 25. Is that a Pandora? Is that bl yeah, Black Pandora. Oh, oh, that's a Black Pandora? Oh, yeah. I see the number right here in the It's corner. a 25, yeah. So only 25 of those. There's only that's 25 legit. of those in the Hot world, box. basically. And rated rookie, too. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad box at all. Has there been another autograph or no? No. I haven't seen another autograph yet. I think there's two. So, Javon, when you look on the other side of the field, who's, like, the one guy where you're, like, give me, like, one wide receiver, any offensive player that you played against. So you're like, I got to keep an eye on this guy. Like, I can't let this guy get out of my sights. I can't let this guy get behind me. Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown? Really? Bro, Antonio Antonio Brown's arguably, like, one of the greatest receivers ever. I was played. honestly going to ask you about him. Seven like, years straight with 1,100 yards plus? Yeah. Elite. And still could do it. But he's like, you know. I mean, off, field, off, field, off the field, regardless, like, I'm, don't even look at that. I'm talking about right. just strictly on the field. Right, 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 right. The man is, in, is ridiculous. Really? Like, insane. Like, so why don't think, And you know he's not a big guy. Like, I, no, no, I've he's met not a big him guy. Before, he's, not, he's not super big. So, so it's a shame that he's not playing anymore? Yeah, it's a shame he's not playing anymore, you know, regardless. Whether well, he wants to or not. I, w I wish he I wish will he was. Anybody, will anybody take him? I don't know. I would take if I was a GM, I would sign him. He, <laughs> bro, he is elite. Dude. But do you know that, that you'll be dealing with some sort of nonsense? Like, don't you feel like if he couldn't keep it together in, in Tampa with Tom Brady? Yeah, I mean, you know, people's personalities sometimes get in the way of the league, right. but it right. doesn't that for me, that doesn't even matter. Right. The man is a is a baller. Like he's arguably one of the greatest receivers that to ever play. And what, what makes it so hard to cover him? It's just route he's running. So explosive and fast, right. and his route running is so crisp. Like yeah. mm. it's like how similar level. of a player is he to Ty like Tyreek? Tyreek is just like, Tyreek's speed is just undescribable, bro. Like, and his ability to turn, like, make breaks at mm. full speed uh -huh. at the same time is like, right. It's like, you've it's, covered him in camp, obviously. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've yeah, covered yeah. him. Like, it's, yeah. just, it's just like, bro. And would you say that, like, that's burn? the hardest player you've ever had yeah. to cover? Because he can run by you, even yeah. if you're, like, deep. Full like, sprint. You can still, he can yeah. still run by you. Right. Cut away from you. Like, he can, it's, it's just, and he'll go up and catch the ball, too. Right, right, so, right, 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 right. For a small guy. Like, yeah, you can't even give him, like, a 15-yard cushion. <laughs> nah, bro, it's like, either you get hands on him or you don't. Yeah. Very far. That's cool. All right, I didn't pull much. That was a uh, whatever box. Boys and girls. Trayvon Morey, that's cool. One more. Just got one nice dual auto. Whatever. You got a Dan Marino. Dak Prescott. I got Brett Favre. Not, no. That's cool. Brett Favre's got a, a couple of things to yeah, deal yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is. Uh, yep. And uh, Darius Leonard with the orange. Cool. All right, well, I'm not I'm gonna gonna give you these. we want to give you these. Take these home. We want to start you out in your collection, okay. right? Okay. We want to give you these. Take, take take these boxes home. Some boxes of Legacy 2022. Hopefully wow. you find yourself in here. That's this year's rookies. So like Chris Olave, okay, nice. um, Kenny Pickett, George Pickens. Nice, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. It's all good. It's their but, first you know, rookie card. What's when well, Javon's second year could be in here too? Yeah, yeah, you so can. Let's come sweet, those. man. And then we got we we slabbed up a card. We call it slabbed up. It's it's a card that is graded by SGC, which is a grading company. It's uh -huh. just like PSA or Beckett. Yeah. And that may sound like I don't know whatever, but at the end of the day, a graded card is like, you know, those the grading companies are like. Brooks Brothers, Hugo Boss, Armani, Tom, you know, Tom Ford. Yeah. We think SGC is like the Tom Ford of grading. Oh, wow. Just because it looks that good yeah, in, yeah, a, yeah, in a slab. Course. Some people think that PSA or Beckett are like the, you know, the upper echelon of receiving grades. Others, you know, disagree. So, I mean, you know, it's like horse racing. Everybody's got a different horse in the race. You know, that SGC slab right there, 
That's a that's mm -hmm. a base rookie of yours. Yep, that's yeah, you. This one, yeah. Yep. Wow. The snake skin that's right there. So, just record. So the one that's not in the slab. Still recording uh -huh. on there. That's not the other one. Okay. Um, oh, that's okay. that's called a zebra. That's a case hit. So like people are like people hunting are for those. People are out there looking for those too. Wow. Yeah. So that's like super rare. Now the only reason why we didn't create that is because it. Panini has yeah, a print line Panini's across the front. Panini's fucked up. That's why you gotta Panini's... look for it. You gotta look real hard for it. See how it's like a line straight across? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way Panini printed it. They put like a. It was like a is it a defect? Or yeah, yeah, it is a, a defect. It's... Damn. That's why but, we didn't grade it. But if someone got that from you and you actually signed it, that card might have a lot of value one day to somebody. So you never know. So hold on to it. It's cool though. Yeah. So we're I will just remember that when if you end up wind up getting really into collecting, Highline starred you into collecting. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I'm, I'm gonna, if I really start getting into it, I'm definitely gonna so make sure I contact you guys. So the about what he was telling you about the grading services, the reason why people like SGC a lot is because you can pay twenty dollars to get your card graded. It'll mm -hmm. take like a week, and then you could maximize your profit like that. Where you send it to these other grading companies that take months and months and months for your cards to come back, and oh, it's okay, just wow. like. So when you're selling a card, timing is everything because yeah. when a player is doing well or a player is doing hot, that's normally when people like to sell. Wow. So they got great customer service. That nice. they do. <laughs> they definitely do. All right, so w w just two last things I needed to know from you. Yeah, what's up? Who are your idols in the game? Who are your idols in life? My idols in the game, um, it, it varied. And know? they don't have to be current, obviously. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. It, it varied, you know, based on when I played the game and right. whatnot. Um, but for my whole persona and like how I wanted to approach the game, Tyron Matthew. I mean, he mm -hmm. played like every position. Tyron Matthew, yep. um, Charles Woodson, like those are guys that like kind of did everything. Sure. Patrick, Patrick Peterson. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever get to meet any of them? I met Patrick Peterson two weeks ago. Really? Well, yeah. when, when you guys play the Saints? Uh, I don't think we play the Saints. They don't, they don't play this. So then, no. Yeah, I don't think we play the Saints. But yeah. I met so Patrick no Honey Peterson. Badger? No, no Honey Badger. Not right now. But um, yeah, I met Patrick Peterson two weeks ago, yeah. and it was quick. It was a quick exchange. But like for me, it was like wow. Like you know, yeah. I mean, on the Vikings alone is like Harrison Smith, right? Like Pat P. Like dudes that have been yeah. in the league for yeah. a long time. Um, Kendricks. Like so, pregame. Like I'm talking about. So me and my boy Verone, it's like one of my best friends, and we're on the same team. We're talking about one of our old coaches, Elite Terry. He's on the Vikings, uh -huh. and Harrison Smith's like doing his little warm-up going out. So we're talking about Harrison, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, damn, like. Like this is Harrison Smith, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm a fan, and I'm right. also I'm also like his peer, but at the same time I'm like, bro, like, you're competing. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> but I'm like, bro, like this is elite, like. Yeah. Right. So in the game, he always wears black, right? Like right. he always wears those black, like half sleeves and whatnot. So me and my boy Verona, like, like this is crazy, like this is Harrison Smith, like and he ends up wearing white during the game, which is like unknown for him to do. Um, and he's like balling, like he knocks the ball out, gets a pick. Right. And we're sitting there every time he, he does something, and I'm just like, wow, it's a great play. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Harrison Smith's a great play. <laughs> like, Pat P comes up, like, basketball, and I'm like, you should have tried Pat P. Like, that's, 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 that's Pat P, man. Like, so, uh, nah, bro, it was like, it was Jersey swap good. after the game? Nah, no jersey swap for me after the game. I, I jersey swap with my boy Troy. I uh, played in uh, college with him. Got but, it. Um, but nah, man, like, seeing those guys, like, those are my peers, you know what I mean? Like, Tom Brady, we practiced against them, but, like, right. last year when we played them, like, Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, like, Leonard Fournette. I remember Leonard Fournette was in high school. I was watching him at the USA, uh, UA All American game. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he was bald in high school. He's bald now. Like right. he's getting tackled. He's laughing and shit. Like enjoying the time. <laughs> Tom, I bl blitzed Tom Brady and like he threw it away before I got there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like standing next to him like, "What's up, Tom Brady?" Like I I can't even <laughs> say like just Brady or the Tom. Like right. I can say, his whole name. say the full name. <laughs> the full name. I'm like, "Yo, what's good, Tom Brady?" He's like, hey, "What's up? How you doing, man?" I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and I'm like, like jogging back. I'm like, "Damn, like that's Tom Brady. Like that's dope." <laughs> Um, <laughs> exactly. Not facts. Like AB. You're just hoping that they call your number for a blitz all. Yeah, the time, you know what right? I mean. Like uh, AB caught a slant and like ran it for a touchdown. Right? So right. I was chasing after him, and like as I'm chasing him, like I'm like, dang, I gotta catch him. And he's like sliding, but then like I see all the fans like cheering. And it's like AB and he does like his little thing, and so I'm like looking at him. I'm like, damn, this is so cool. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, that was, really cool. that was dope. Like he's elite. That's How bad did you want to sack Tom Brady though? I mean, I wanted to, but like, it was just like, to be you know, a, just to like he, he just knows everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so hard right. to play him because like he's been in the league longer than I've been alive. Like he's been in the league twenty three years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, twenty two. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? So it's like when I was when we were pre pre gaming for him. He's like, forty six now, right? They're forty five. Forty five. They were like, uh, yeah. So there's nothing that we can do that he hasn't seen disguise wise, anything like that. Like, he's been in the league longer than you've been alive. Right. So I'm like, cool. Like I'll just go to the game. Like, <laughs> I'll try my best. Like, <laughs> um, 
but nah, it was like it was it was super dope. Yeah, super that's dope. gotta be. It's gotta yeah, be, man. It was and then awesome. what do you, what would you say about away from the game? Who are your hero? Well, my father, and my brother. Yeah, yeah, nice. really For solid. Sure. Like yeah. my, my my dad, my brother, and my grandpa. Um, my nice. late grandfather that passed away. But um, nah, yeah, those two are like super solid. And I got other role models that step in, like Coach Hay Keith Hayward, um, Trey Watson. These are my coaches in uh, Oregon, and then right. Gerald mm -hmm. Alexander, who's my coach here last year. Those guys also have molded me to play the game in a better way. Keon. Um, KT, he was a, a seven on seven coach. Uh, Victor James, another coach, Anthony Jones. Like these are all guys that have stepped in and helped me grow and added to my game. And you know whether I was playing receiver, defense, or just mentality wise, you know. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, really like solid. My brother and my dad. My brother won for a role model for me chasing. Right. And then my dad as the role model for like helping me get to the point. And then he also did something like in uh, seventh grade. He was he basically came to me and was like, I have no more energy for you. Like I can't make you go to the gym. I can't. I can't make you want to be great. You have to do it on your own. Right. Like I'll be at the gym if you want to. If you want to come and work out, then you can. But yeah, you don't have to. And right. I think him by him making that decision, it helped me make my decision of like I'm gonna do the, the work regardless. Like I sacrificed going out on Fridays or you know parties and whatnot because I knew that I had a bigger. I party later on, and I ended up in Miami where it's like party central. Hell yeah. Right. But I knew that I had to sacrifice then so I could you know uh, be successful. Now. Sounds like familiar music to what I usually you know played out back in the, my days. Yeah. You know, like that's a, at the end of the day, it's it's got to come from within you. Mm -hmm. No one can make you do it. Because after it's done, it's done. Especially for football. Right. Like basketball, you can still go play at 24-hour fitness. Baseball, you can pick up a game. But like football, right. yeah. like you oh, can't yeah, put the pads yeah. on anymore. No. So. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I can only imagine going out there. Yeah, I'm like, we're, 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 my ass we're, having, um, we're having Lawrence Taylor drill his ass soon. Well, yeah. But LT, it was, we're going to bring one of the legends out. Oh, nice. We're going to bring LT out. And we're gonna and we're gonna literally pat put him, him in a, like a, one of those big giant padded balls, and we're gonna have him like li we're gonna have him literally like level him out. Good luck, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, seriously. Hey, thank you, Vaughn. Thank you for coming, man. Of we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Really, of course, appreciate man. It. Really awesome. Appreciate it, man. One last thing we want to ask for, ask of you before you leave. That jersey is a Javon jersey. It's a Highland tradition to have our guests sign their own of course, jersey. Of course, man. For us, we'll put it up. We're not going to sell it. Yeah. Have, that's not, that's not how that goes. It goes, literally goes on the Wall of Fame. So Awesome. Well, yeah, appreciate it. having yeah. you. We'd love to have you back. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Thanks, Thanks guys. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Seriously. Seriously.